Accept Jesus Christ in your life, amen? amen. And feel people good. Keith, you're a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> cannot be, bro. Cannot. Now I'm the young pastor. <laughs> cannot be, gotta be. That's a miracle in disguise. After all of this, Jesus did all of these miracles. After three years of his ministry, people still didn't believe. He said, you know what? I want one more miracle. Show me. And God says, you know, one more miracle ain't, ain't, ain't going to change your mind. Even be foretold that he, of his death, even when he's resurrected, people still didn't believe. What would make you believe? What does Jesus Christ have to do in your life to make you realize that He is who He said He is? And you are destined to a place where He said you will go if you accept Him as your Lord and Savior. What else? What is your plan B? Have you thought about that? What other signs could He ever do in your life to make you believe. I'm sure that, that the Lord was de deeply disappointed in those times when He showed Himself to people. He made it perfectly clear. Everyone saw it for three years. Some of His disciples participated in the miracles, but even one of them didn't believe. Why? Because they have developed permanent blind spots in their lives. Hebrews 11.6 says, Faith only comes, the only way we can please God is through our faith. God knows how hard it is to believe Him. It is so difficult when things look junk. When things look desperate. When things look like there's no hope. But God tells us we have to live by our faith, not by our sight. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Okay? It would be good to realize that God is doing something in your life right now as we speak. He's changing your heart to be more like Jesus. Some of us are kicking and screaming, amen? Our flesh will have a fit. Why? We don't want to change because it hurts. You're going to hurt anyway. This will hurt, hurt changing for, for the better, amen? Okay? Or you can stay the same or get even worse. If you're struggling in your faith, ask the Lord to strengthen your faith and give you more clarity. Some of us are struggling because we don't know where we're going. Amen? We need to ask clarity. Seek Jesus first. Then you may notice all the signs and wonders He has already done for you and promises that then we're going to have to do something more. But you have to get ready for it. The second part is deeds. As I mentioned before, okay, you have to know, then you have to do. Very simple. That's the hard part, though. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11 says, God has given each of you gifts from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. It's not selfishness, it's selflessness. God wants John to use his skills. He wants Brian to use his skills. He wants Blake to help somebody else. And that's really important. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Not half-heartedly, wholeheartedly. Then everything you do will bring, glory, will bring glory to God through Christ Jesus. If you do things well with all of your heart, okay, it glorifies God. Why? There are no shortcuts. I want, I want the full load, not half a load. Okay? How do you know what is your ministry? Every one of you are in ministry, Christians. How do you know? Here it is. Look at your talents. What are you good at? What are your gifts? What are your abilities? What is your passion? God can turn that around. When you use your talents and gifts to help other people, that's called ministry. Amen? There's nothing fancy. There's no mysterious things. Okay? Bright is a resident manager using his skills as a ministry to help other people, right? That's your ministry. What is Lane doing? Ministry. He's helping others. Well, helping me make, make me look good. Make me look good. Okay? 
to help others? What is John doing? Is there a condition? Helping others. What is Alistair doing? What are you doing? Helping others. If you're helping others, okay, that's called ministry. Okay? It's not work. Okay? Ministry. It's serving God and serving others. Can you be a minister, um, can you be a minister selling solar panels? Pounding nails, <coughs> surfing, cutting hair, putting on makeup, serving foods, being a stay, stay at home parent? Yes, you can. Why? You're helping others. Anytime you're helping others in the name of Jesus Christ, you are a minister. Or you are ministering. Or you are helping. Amen? Can you do that at State Farm? Absolutely. Can you do it in Nanakuli? Yes, you can. Can you do it in Cardina? Yes, you can. It's not the place. It's the presence of Christ. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. I love this parable. Amen? Talks about the talents given by the master. One had five talents. Other had two talents. Had one. The one with five and two, okay? He says, go. Okay, I want to return to investment. Notice that God didn't say how to do it. God says, just Phil, I want to return. They went there. They didn't say, didn't say that they enjoyed what they did. But they had faith that they wanted to honor the master, so they invested their talents and brought <coughs> back a good return. And it pleased the master. And, and what did the master say? Well done, good faithful servant, come into the rest of the Lord, and I will give you more. Cool, yeah. What happened to the guy with the one talent? Oh, I was afraid. Give me that talent back, and I'll give it to somebody who will produce more. It's not the talents that you were given. It's how you invest the talents to glorify God. Whatever it is. Don't pull hole. Don't waste your talents. Okay? Don't hide your talents. Invest it into the kingdom. If it's one talent, okay? Invest into the kingdom. If it's two or five, whatever your talent is, God has given you. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly where you are, but from the beginning of time, he knew that Ted would be sitting here next, next to Estelle. He knew that John would be sitting there. He knew that Charlotte would be sitting there. Why? God is intentional. One word from God will change her forever. But are you listening? That's the key. What is he saying to Jen or to Vicky? What is he saying to you? And that's important to understand that. Fear doesn't do anything but stop you from growing. Faith of a mustard seed will move mountains. And that's important. Maybe, maybe some people are just lazy. Anybody know some lazy Christians? Oh, I don't want to come to church. Oh, I want to do this. I don't want to do that. No, no. God, you understand. Yeah. No, no. no, God doesn't like laziness. But God will always bless. God will always bless you. If you do your best work, no shortcuts, okay, no fine lines, no small print. God wants us to do something. Why? Because doing nothing creates nothing. Do something. Move a chair, okay. Make some, make some food. Whatever it is. Several life lessons. <coughs> we need to do something. God rewards our faith and our hopes. If we squander, we'll wonder. What if? Don't waste it. Don't pull hope. God may be testing your faith right now. Some of you feel like you're in a no way situation. Amen? Looking around, oh man. Some of you look at your job with dreariness. Oh, I don't want to be here. Some of you are miserable at your job. Turn your misery into a ministry and do something different. Okay? Look for ways to be a blessing at your job. If you're going to be there for eight hours, do something positive, right? Smile at somebody. Say, good morning. Okay? If you're married, man, your wife and your husband got to be your best friend, period. My wife and I wake up in the morning, I always say, have I told you I love you today? You did it. Oh, sorry, eh? Why? It keeps our relationship fresh and alive. Hug somebody today. Okay? Encourage somebody today. Say, how's it? Nice to see you. Okay? You might not be, okay, you might, might not be like Lily or Lily just, <laughs> she overflows and she's so bubbly. I'm not. What are you laughing for? 
but she is. I share this, and I'm more like John, you know, we were, like, we were walking one day and down in Temecula Roths, and Lilia has, she see things bubbling all the time, right? We pass somebody, she goes, good morning! Oh, everybody talks, talk, sorry, oh, good morning. Wait, morning. <laughs> we sit down in a plane, she's talking story for three hours, somebody, I'm not talking to me, I'm I'm not like sleep, right? I pretend to sleep. How many of you do that? I pretend to sleep. I'm not talking to nobody. But she's talking about, oh, she could be going this. Oh, have you gone? You, know, you want to eat Hawaiian food? Oh, young fish market is really good. You like Mexican food? No, 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 no. Okay, she, she should work for the HVB. <laughs> not me. Okay, I love people, but people drain me. Anybody like that? Come on, come on, you guys, right? Okay, it's after church, though. Yeah. During church, I love you guys. <laughs> Just know this. God has his, your best interest in mind. And he's working on your behalf. Do the very best exactly where you are. If you're faithful with the assignment that you have already, God, it's just a matter of time. God will, okay, will promote you to a higher calling. But if you're, not, okay, if you're not a good steward you already have, God will not bless you with more. Why should he? <clears throat> Okay? If we're going to screw up with more things, well, why would God bless us with more things? That's really important that we do that. Okay, Colossians, I love this. Colossians 3, 3, 23 and 24 says, Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. And the story. Whatever you're doing, God is your employer. And God will give you promotion. He is the one that promotes. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the master, okay, and that the master you're serving is Christ. He is the boss. Is there a breach in the wall in your in, in your personal wall? Think about it. Where is it? Is it in your marriage? Is it in your relationship with Christ? Is there something in your family that, oh, that needs to be repaired? How about your finances, your health? Wherever it is, it is. It will take time. It will take effort. It will take patience. And it will take God's help. Period. Amen? As I close this message, I just want you guys just to stay a moment and, and pray asking God where is the breach in my wall Lord everyone has something to deal with everyone has some brokenness wherever it is we are not perfect but we're being perfected amen let's pray